we want to welcome everyone in tonight and uh, glad that you've uh, taken time to be here. We want to welcome those that are joining us live stream as well. Uh, hopefully uh, you uh, received your, uh, your uh, prayer update uh, this morning. Uh, if you need a hard copy, we have some up here on the front table. And uh, we do want to mention uh, you should have got the uh, one call now. Uh, right around lunchtime for uh, Don Bond. Uh, Don had to uh, be taken to the, to the hospital. He was at the uh, uh, doctor's office and uh, they uh, trying to get uh, the uh, Dallas started for him. And so uh, hopefully they can be able to, to relieve him a little bit, help him to be able to breathe a little bit better. Uh, he's just out of, out of air totally. So uh, he's, uh, he's there in the hospital. So just lift him up in your prayers as well as Mary. And uh, as they're uh, dealing with uh, the physical things that he faces. And I know we have quite a few others that are, that are going through physical things. So just continue to pray for those that we, uh, that we have on our, <clears throat> on our prayer list. And uh, the power of prayer, right? Very important. Very important. Uh, do want to remind you uh, of one activity that we've got coming this Sunday night. We're having a game night. Over at the Iafrate's house, uh, Jenny's back there. Uh, uh, Jenny and John's house, and uh, they've got a lot of uh, fun games ready for us. Uh, we're going to have pizza and uh, the sides and stuff to go along with that, and it's going to be a great time of, of uh, fun and fellowship. Uh, they've got, like I said, all kinds of games. They got anything from cornhole to board games, and they actually got a pool table as well. So. Uh, uh, those of you that think you're pretty good at pool, you know, we'll, we'll see see how good you are, right? So uh, a lot of fun thing on Sunday night, so um, make a note of that. Uh, we'll have the directions if you need them on uh, on Sunday morning. We've got the address. It's probably behind me on the screen, in fact. So uh, be sure to, to join us. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we got our new carpet in. got our new chairs in the auditorium, and uh, so we're excited about that. And... Uh, if uh, some of you men can stay after for about 20 minutes or so, we'll we'll set up. I, I've got a, got the chairs started. I just need a little bit of help finishing, uh, getting the chairs set up ready for Sunday morning. So the ladies so, are just supposed to watch. Well, the ladies, <laughs> ladies, if you want to, we'll let you as well. We do have some uh, uh, some of the, the connection cards and offering envelopes. We need to stuff in the uh, little pockets on the on some of the chairs as well. So uh, shouldn't take us long. Uh, to get that finished up and you can be able to look at the new carpet if you haven't had a chance to do that. So we praise the Lord for that. Uh, you just don't well realize how uh, how worn uh, that carpet was until you got the things out of the out of the way and it was time for new carpet and we praise the Lord for, for the new carpet. So tonight, Revelation chapter 4. Chapter 4, we... Uh, we finished the, uh, the seventh church last week talking about Laodicea. And uh, we're uh, going to jump right in here to, to that, next, uh, that next section of Revelation. If you remember back in chapter 1, it talks about the things that had already happened, the things that are happening, which we're at right now, which was the seven churches, chapter 2 and chapter 3, was the things that are going on right now in our world. And then as we move to chapter 4 will be the things that, that will be next. Because, because whether you realize it or not tonight, the next event is for the church to be raptured out of here. Alright, that, that can happen anytime. It can happen tonight. So... Uh, that's the next event that, that's on the timetable in, in God's calendar. And uh, so uh, realizing that, <clears throat> we see that it's uh, no coincidence that the first thing to happen after job, John describes the seven churches is that the church is going to be taken up into heaven. Okay, And, and I'm going to give you some more uh, scriptural evidence as well as some, some more... Uh, uh, things that are going to help you to understand that we as believers, the church, we will be raptured out before that tribulation Amen. takes Amen. place. Amen. Okay, there's a lot of views out there. Okay, a lot of views on that. There's some that think 
Uh, it's going to be a mid-trib rapture, which means that they think they have to go through the first three and a half years, but uh, no, we're going to be raptured out, and we're going to see even more here with chapter 4 tonight that, that we're not here. But then you have some that believe that uh, it'll be at the end of the, the tribulation, which uh, you can't really give any scriptural reference for that because all the scripture that, that some of those people try to use, that's not applying to the church. It's, it's applying to, to the second coming when Jesus sets foot on the earth. The rapture, we're, we're out of here, okay? We're, we're, we're out of here. He, we meet the Lord in the air, okay? So we'll wait for Him. Yeah, right? Yeah, we'll wait for Him if they think they're going to go through it, okay? That, they, they think they're going to be surprised, though, when, when He does rapture us out. So uh, think about this. John was the last remaining apostle. Okay, as he spent those last years of his life, John is the only one that wasn't uh, martyred for his faith. Okay, all the rest were, were, were martyred. Whether they were crucified, their head was chopped off, whatever it might have been with all the rest of the apostles, John was the only re remaining apostle and, and he, uh, he was basically tied in with, with the church as we know it. And we see here as we move into chapter 4 that John is, is taken up into heaven. So I believe this is a picture of the rapture. As John was taken up, whether bodily or in the spirit, we're not sure. Okay, As we read the first couple of verses here in a moment, we see that this elevation to heaven is a picture of the church being raptured out of here before the tribulation begins. Now, I want you to, to note the invitation that came from Christ Jesus back in chapter 1 of Revelation where it says, who, who is the one who first spoke to John, it says, like a trumpet. Okay, so there's another picture of, of that rapture. And uh, we're going to see in 1 Thessalonians where it talks about the trump will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and we that remain will be caught up into the air to be with Him forever, okay? So we see that the event there was similar to the promise of the Lord to the disciples at, at the end of His life, okay? In John chapter 14, verse 2, two and 3, Jesus said to the, to the disciples at that time, He says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, He says, I... I would have told you. He says, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So, everyone knows that God's in heaven. All right? And Jesus ascended to heaven after that 40 days after he was resurrected. He spent another 40 days. And then we read there, in, in Acts chapter 1 where, where he was taken up. And it tells us there that as he was taken up is the way that he will come back in his second coming. Okay, so not the rapture, but the second coming. So he is sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding on our behalf right now. Amen. So Paul tells us that when he, he himself died, it says his spirit and soul would depart and be with Christ. In Philippians 1, verse 23, and uh, we're going to be getting to that in a couple Sundays, right? Because we're, we're going through the book of Philippians. We just got started a couple weeks ago, but we're going to be looking at that here, uh, not this week, but next week, where it talks about that, that he would be with, be with Christ when, when he dies. He also tells us in, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 5, for though I am absent from the body, I am present with you in spirit. Okay? So, he's with us. So, obviously then, when a Christian dies, his soul or spirit goes to be with Christ in the Father's house. That is, heaven. So, his or her body 
whoever it may be, is going to remain in the grave or, you know, if you got cremated, don't worry about that because he, he'll sort it all out, right? God's going to take care of all that. He'll sort it all out and, and you're going to get that new body and uh, that you'll have for, for eternity. So don't worry about that. He's going to sort it all out. But that body is still here on this earth one way or the other. Alright? So we see when he raptures the church out that, that, that he'll take us up. Alright? And that'll be just before the tribulation. Now, if you've been paying any attention over the last couple of weeks, things are heating over there. He, heating up over there, aren't they? We see where Iran sent the sent the missiles and 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 the and, and the uh, the other stuff there and drones. it was shot down the, the drones and and uh, they shot them down along with some of the Americans supporting Britain supporting and then there's a few others that were there helping to to support with them and who knows what's going to be happening in the days ahead uh, Israel don't mess with Israel you know they they may go ahead and decide to, to retaliate even yet. Uh, of course, our president right now is uh, uh, kind of a little wayward, and uh, I'll be nice, but uh, he, he better be careful because uh, uh, America could be in trouble if he's not willing to support Israel. So uh, we'll, we'll see how all of it plays out, but my point being is you better start listening, okay? Get, get listening to, for the trumpet because it could be any time. So we see that uh, when we think about the word rapture, okay, rapture is, is, is the English word that we are using for, for the Greek word harpazo, H-A-R-P-A-Z-O. Okay, so rapture is not actually in the Bible, okay, uh, but that's the English word that we use for the Greek word, and it means to be caught up or raptured or snatched up. Like our mom used to do. You like, yeah, like uh, my mom used to say, I'm, I'm going to snatch you up. Okay? And I knew what that meant. And that wasn't good if she snatched me up. That meant that I was about to get the board applied to the backside to help straighten me out a little bit. But. The snatching up that, that Jesus is going to do is a good thing. Amen. All right? Amen. He's going to snatch us out of here. All right? Before all the terrible things begin to take place. So here's the promise of God. I love the promises of God. We could, we could take a year talking about the promises of God. But Jesus promised the church that we will be kept from the tribulation. We will. Be kept from the trip. In fact, go back to to the church of Philadelphia that we talked about two weeks ago. He talks about how we will not go through that time. We, as the church, will be raptured out of here. Because think about this. Let me give you some examples. Noah and his family were saved from judgment by getting into the the ark. That's a picture. Hey, how about a lot? Lot was, stay, was saved by, from the judgment because the angels came and, and said, hey, you and your family need to get out of here. Too bad that some of his family didn't listen, didn't believe, and they were killed in, in that destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. But there was a way of escape. God, with his people, he, he delivers us from the judgment. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to have hard times in our life, okay? Don't, don't misrepresent that. Because there's, there's tribulation that we do have to, to face, but not the ultimate tribulation, okay, that we see in Revelation. So believers, we're going to be saved from the wrath to come. In 2 Peter, let me give you this verse. I don't think it's up there on the screen, but let me read these. If you want to turn there, you can. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5 to 9. He says, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, coming back to this example, Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. 
and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterwards would live ungodly. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man, dwelling among them, tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Let me stop there a minute. We're living in a world like that. Verse 9, then the Lord knows how to deliver the ungodly out of, or to deliver, I'm sorry, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. God's going to take us out of here before it all starts. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10, it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, listen to this, who delivers us from the wrath to come. What scripture was that? That's 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. So let me give you four reasons for locating the rapture right here at this point with Revelation 4. Okay? The churches have been talked about numerous times. Now the church will not be mentioned again until the last part of Revelation. And it's not called the church. It talks about the saints. Okay? So the church is not on the earth anymore. It's going to be raptured up. So here's four reasons. First of all, the location for the event is right for the rapture. Chapters 4 and 5 present a vision in heaven. Why would he talk about heaven right after referring to the church? Talk about John being basically snatched up, whether in the body or in the spirit, either or it doesn't matter. He was raptured up to the, to the heavens to see the throne room, to see God, to see these, these priests, to see these, these, these other four uh, seraphims, cherubims, whatever you want to refer to them as. Raptured up. Because when you get to chapter 6, it begins to talk about the tribulation period. Alright, so we see that, that, that there was a reason here. In Revelation 3.10 it says, Because you have kept my commands to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour, hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. What is that? That's chapter 3, verse 10 with the Philadelphia church. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago and, and referred to how the church is going to be raptured out. I'm just reinforcing that what we talked about there again tonight because I believe it's important for us to understand this. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I've already referred to it. He says, the things which are. And then he says, and the things which will take place after this. So we're transitioning from the things that, 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 that are, church time period, to things that are going to be taking place when Christ raptures the church out and then that tribulation will, will take place. Here's the second thing. It's the, absent, the absence of the mention of the church in the rest of Revelation indicates that it's not on the earth during the tribulation. The church is mentioned 16 times. Do you hear me? 16 times in chapters 1 to chapter 3. And it's mentioned once or not mentioned, it's not mentioned even once in chapter 6 to 18, which is dealing with the tribulation. The third thing is the extensive use of Old Testament language and symbols in chapters 4 to 18 is an indication that he's speaking to Israel and not the church. This is understandable since the church age is the time of the Gentiles, whereas the tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. That's in Daniel. 
Daniel is, is a pro prophetic book. And he talks about that 70 weeks, Jacob's trouble. The 70th week of Daniel, as Daniel refers to it, is, is that Jacob's trouble. God is dealing with Israel. So some of the symbols from the Old Testament are the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the altar, the elders, the cherubim, the seals, the trumpets, and the plagues. These are all talked about in the Old Testament, aren't they? So these are the things that we're going to be seeing in chapter 6 all the way up to, to chapter 18. And then here's the fourth thing. There's much similarity between the events of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and other scriptural teachings on the rapture. So let me take you to a couple of those passages, okay? The first one is 1 Thessalonians. Let me get over there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you want to turn there. We're going to look at, at verse 13 and following. So let me get over there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 13, he says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those that have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. Those that die without Christ have no hope, do they? But when, when a fellow believer in Christ dies, we may mourn, but it's a different morning because we know that they're, they're, with, they're in the presence of God. Absolutely. To be absent from the body is to be but present with the Lord. Amen. So it's a different, different sorrow. We don't sorrow as others that don't have no hope. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by, by no means precede those who are asleep. Here it is. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. <clears throat> so Paul's saying, hey guys, you're going to be raptured out of here before that time of trial, that tribulation time. Hey, you can comfort each other with these words, knowing that you're going to see that loved one again. And when Christ comes to, to rapture the church out, we meet him in the air. Hey, they're going to get there before us. Those in the grave are going to go up first, and then we're going to follow behind. Isn't that great to know? He's going to catch us up out of here. Now turn over to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me read these verses for you. Verse 1, he says, Now, now brethren, concerning the com coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together with to, to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he sits at, that he, so at, that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things and now you know that it is, what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he 
is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed and the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, some of that's referring to the second coming of Christ, okay? He's talking about some of the things that are going to be taking place during the tribulation. So, we see here that, I don't know, you got those charts, Ken? Got a couple charts here that, that kind of help you to understand that. I know it's not real visible, but we see the past ages. You see the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sin. The church age, which we're in right now. The next event is, oh, the rapture. Okay, you see some other verses. John 14, 1 to 3. You see uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. We just read that. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 58. Also, we're referring to that. Then you see the next thing that comes. Oh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 to 10. It's dealing with that seven year tribulation. Okay. Three and a half years are going to be, they're going to be talking peace. That one world, that one world ruler will be setting up, making everything look like it's great and fine. The, there's going to be peace. But then at the middle point of it, at that three and a half year period time, and we'll get into this as we get on into the chapters, okay? We, we'll be talking in depth about it. But then at that three and a half year period, that middle part of the tribulation, all hell will break loose. Yep. Okay? The, the, the treaty be, will be broken, and then that's when all the things that, that we're going to be talking about here in, in, in a few weeks will be taking place. Then... We see at the end of that tribulation the glorious appearing of Jesus. He comes to the earth, sets foot on the earth, and he, and he does his business. Of course, Re or Revelation 19 and then Matthew 24. Then, of course, that at the end of that, that starts the millennial reign of Christ here on earth. That thousand year period. Okay. Look to the other slide, uh, Ken. It just kind of helps break it down a little bit more. Talking about the 70 weeks of Daniel. And uh, just some, some thoughts there. Uh, again, we see the, the Messiah, the, the Prince. Uh, Jesus dies on the cross. Uh, Jerusalem destroyed in AD 70. Uh, the year of the Lord's favor. Then we see the rapture of the church. And then, of course, that moves into the, the tribulation period. That 70 weeks that's talked about in Daniel. And we'll be alluding to those passages as we begin to talk about them, those things, okay? So that's to come. We're not going to get into that tonight, but I just want to kind of give you a little bit of a, an overview to help, help you understand this a little bit. Because there is a difference. I'll get back to you, Ken. There is a difference between the rapture and between the second coming of Christ. Ken, go ahead. Yeah, this is not a rabbit. This is in Second Thessalonians where do you think the where it talks about he who restrains is is that talking about the Holy Spirit who's doing the restraining now? Yeah. So do we assume that the Holy Spirit is when we're when the church is raptured, the Holy Spirit is taken out? As we know it today. Okay. As we know yeah, it today. Because, because just like in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit empowered them, but it was different. Yeah. It wasn't constantly there, you know. You know, as we as we read with <clears throat> with so many of the different examples we see in the Old Testament talking about the Spirit came on. You know, <clears throat> even even Saul, the first king of, of Israel, you know, the Spirit was on him, but then God took it away from him because of his disobedience. Sam? Would it be safe to say that the majority of the people that will be raptured are Gentiles? I would say yes. Because really, when you look at the church as a whole today, it is a Gentile church. You know, there are Jewish, Messianic. there are Messianic Jews. Yeah. Messianic Jew is those that have trusted Christ as their Savior. But a lot of Jews yeah. have not. Right. So, yes, the church is probably, because uh, think about all the people groups, right? So many people groups uh, uh, way outpopulate the the Jewish people. So yeah, I believe that uh, those that will be raptured out of here will be mostly Gentiles. But there will be some Jewish 
people that will be raptured as well. Yeah. Yes, Diane. I, I've always, I don't know how true this is, but I've always heard that that God has a specific number of people that he wants to that he's got of the Gentiles to come in. And as soon as that last Gentile that he says is coming, that's when the rapture will occur. Yeah, that, that's a, th those are good statements. Uh, we don't know when that will be, of course, because we don't know the, the, the time. Uh, there's been a lot that have tried to predict it, but they've been left looking silly. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and those that will try to predict it in the future are going to be left looking silly. Because only God knows. He'll say, son, it's time. Yeah. Go get him. Yeah. Go get him, Jesus. And then that's when it's going to take place. That, that, that catching up or that snatching up, what we call the rapture. <clears throat> Ken, you had a, another just, question or comment? You may not get to it tonight, but what you're talking about is sort of the pre-trib rapture. I've always thought that, that right here in Revelation 4, that the 24 elders are the picture of the church. It is a picture so of the that, church, and, that's, that's and we will get it. I don't know if we'll get to it tonight. It just depends on how time goes. But I've always thought that's a great picture of the rapture happening now, a pre-trib, because that's where the church is in chapter 4. Well, and, and, and that's exactly it. That, that's, that's why this is another strong point to the church being raptured before the tribulation is because of what we read in chapter 4 and chapter 5 of Revelation. Because it's talking about the throne room of God. Around His throne. Worshiping Him. He's talking about us being there. And of course we'll get into the, 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 24, uh, what, the 24 elders there and what, what we believe that is. There's a lot of discussion on that again. But I, uh, I fall on, on one side of it. And I believe there's a lot of scriptural reference for where I'm going to fall. So we'll get to that here, here can probably a, possibly four, tonight, if not next week. Yes, can, Nancy. Can you put the number four screen back up? Or the, the four? Yeah, can you back up? The four. The number four. On the fourth, the fourth four point reasons of the reasons. Yeah. Could you go back to that fourth yeah. screen there, Kim? Where she can get get those verses, I guess. Oh, the, oh, oh the notes. Reason, the four reasons. The four reasons. The four reasons. Why? Why the, uh, the church is raptured out before the tribulation. It'd be about two or three slides back. Four reasons. While he's trying to find that, any other questions in regards to the church being raptured out before the tribulation? Thoughts, questions? Okay, well, let's look here in, in, in chapter 4. You try to find that, Ken, and put it back up. But uh, as, I, uh, as I've been doing and as we'll continue to do, uh, those that would like to read, I, I want to read chapter 4, okay? I want to read it out loud. I want us to, to be able to hear it and uh, be able to, to see what we're about to, to get into. So who'd like to, to, to start reading here in chapter 4, verse 1 to 6? Frank, read verse 1 to 6 for us. After these things I look, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet's trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must have taken have take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone mm -hmm. in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance, and like an emerald. Around the throne was 24 thrones. And on the throne I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from, their, and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven, oh, you said, seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass, like crystal. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature 
was like a lion. The second living creature was like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. All right, who wants to finish up verse 9 to 11? Dan? And those, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty-four elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Okay, thanks for, for the reading, both guys. Appreciate that. So let me let me start it out with this, okay? Worship. Worship. What does worship mean? Anybody? Dan? Dan, praise. Dan, go ahead, Dan, and I'll get to to, to recognize the worth of. Exactly. Value. Exactly. Uh, Give you praise. Okay. What does what does worship look like? However, it fits for you. <laughs> okay. But it's more than just singing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> worship is just not singing. <laughs> worship involves spending time with with God and His Word, just you and Him. Uh, worship is prayer. Uh, worship is giving back to Him in your time, talent, and your treasures. Of course, it is lifting our voices to Him, and, and worship means to ascribe worth. As Dan, Dan said, Robin, I said. Worship is your lifestyle. Okay, worship is. Whatever, yes, whatever you do, you're to bring glory to God. That's what the word says. Yeah, coming back to 1 Corinthians, right? Where it says, whether I eat or drink or whatsoever I do, to do all to the glory of God. So we we see that that worship is to use all that we have to bring to praise God for for all He is and for all that He does. Because He's worthy, isn't He? That's what worship is. He's worth our our praise. And in, in verse eleven and, and then we'll I want to talk about worship for a minute because I think it's very important for us to understand this is what it's all about. It's about worshiping God. That's why He created us. Revelation 4, verse 11. You are worthy. Worship. O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. That's why God created us, is to worship Him. Because He's worthy. He's worthy because He deserves the glory. He, he deserve, deserves the honor, and He deserves the power. Then if you go to chapter 5, verse 12, it says, saying with a loud voice, worthy worship is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. God is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Amen. So think about this as we as we begin this study here in chapter four. It's about worship. God is worthy. Jesus is worthy. Hey, the Holy Spirit is worthy. Because they're all three in one. So when we look at this picture that we see here in chapter 4, realize all three of the Trinity is involved in this. The Holy Spirit's mentioned, God's mentioned, and Jesus is mentioned. All three of them deserve that, that worship. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Guess what heaven is? Worship. 
Heaven's a place of worship. That's what we're going to be doing. Yeah, there's going to be jobs that we're all going to have. Because work is part of worship. It is. That's what he did with Adam and Eve in the garden before sin. They worked. But the thing was, it, it, it wasn't laborious. It wasn't tiring like it is today. It was enjoyable. All right? It was enjoyable. They enjoyed taking care of the, the garden. But of course, when sin came back, came to play, then came all the, the sweat of the brow, the thorns, and all the, the hardness that comes with it. So heaven is a place of worship. And God's people, us, the church, and all those through the other ages, counting the tribulation, because there will be a lot that will be saved during the tribulation. So we see that we're all going to worship Him throughout eternity. So maybe it would be good for us to get some good practice in now. Amen. Right? Amen. Worshiping. So think about this. Somewhere high in heaven, out in the universe, a throne is set. Which is the throne of God. Hey, that hadn't changed. That throne has been there. This throne describes the the throne described in this passage before us gives us a glimpse of the heaven of God. This is where God's at. Now let's look at verse one there. John's finished his 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 speaking to the church, inspired by Jesus. Jesus said, "Hey, John, tell the churches these things." Now it's transitions after these things. Talking about the churches. John says, after these things, I, John, looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Don't you think that was an exciting time for John? And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. A picture of the rapture of the church. Speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things that must take place after this. So they were just speaking to the churches, right? So he says, hey, let me show you something, John. Jesus spoke and said, hey, come on up here. I'm going to show you some things now that are going to take place after the, the end of the church age. Now, we look in the Bible and we see that the Bible speaks of three heavens. But actually, there's a fourth one too, and I'm going to explain that in a moment. The first heaven is the atmospheric heaven. Okay? We read about that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. And I don't have time to go and, and read all these passages, okay? So take them down and y'all can look at them later. But Genesis 1, verse 6 to 7, talks about the atmospheric heaven where the prince of the power of the air holds forth and then one day will be destroyed. Of course, we're talking about Satan. That's the first heaven. The second heaven is the stellar heaven known as the universe or, or what we would call outer space. That's the second heaven. Matthew 24 verse 29 talks about that one. Then we have a third heaven in which John was caught up in verse 1. This is the heaven that John is referring, being referred to. Come on up here, John. This is the heaven of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 and verse 4. So, those are the three heavens, but then guess what? There is a fourth one in there. The future heaven. The new heaven and the new earth that God's working on right now, preparing it for us. And it's going to come down from, from there and 
We're going to be able to enjoy it for all eternity. All, turn, all eternity. That's our heavenly home. Revelation 21. And again, we'll get to that in our study as we continue to move through. Any questions, comments about these heavens? Paul was caught up into that same third heaven. Right? Yeah, and that's really, I believe, what the, the passage in 2 Corinthians yeah. was talking about, Ken, that I gave you. That's the heaven that, that Paul was was caught up into, and he didn't know, you know, he describes it just a little bit, but he doesn't say if he was physically or if it was a spiritual thing for him as yeah, well. But God told him to keep it a secret, basically. Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. So he told him to, write it down. <laughs> to keep that one to himself. That's right. So atmosphere is where we live. It's here, our, what we breathe. Well, the atmospheric heaven is, is where that prince and power of the, the air is at. Yeah. Call it the sky. It's the sky. Yeah, basically the, the sky. Yeah. Because the, because the second heaven is the stellar heaven. It's that universe. It's, it's outer space. Okay, that, that uh, they try to send all these different shuttles up into to, to check things out. That would be what we call the, 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 the second heaven. Now, here's a key, a key point that we need to understand. The central, the central object, the central object of heaven is the throne of God. Amen. And that's what we're going to see mentioned numerous times in chapter 4 and chapter 5 is, is the throne. The throne. In fact, it's referred to eight times in chapter Four, verse 1 to 6. 18 times together in chapter 4 and, and 5. It's the focal point. It's the fixed point with everything else in heaven located in relationship to the throne. Because that's who we're worshiping. That's who's worthy. It's, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But let me throw this in. This may well be the judgment seat of Christ where we'll be at as we stand before him as believers. Now realize, for those who don't understand it, the judgment seat of Christ is where we as believers will be judged for how we lived our life on this earth after we accepted it. Let me give you some passages. Okay, Romans 14, verse 2. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. And then 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10 to 15. Because it talks about the things, the wood, hay, and stubble will be burned up. The gold, silver, and the precious stones will endure. So those things that we do for Christ will last those things that we're just doing for ourselves or for the world, that'll be burned up. And how we live our life, are we living for self or are we living for others? Are we living for God? You know, we talked about that Sunday morning with, you know, the theme of, of our study in Philippians is overjoy. I mentioned what joy stands for, the acrostic. Jesus, others, and yourself. We're last. We're insignificant in God's eyes. It's Him, others, and then ourselves. But we see that, that that judgment seat of Christ, I believe, okay, emphasize, I believe that that's going to be taking place after we're raptured. During, possibly during the tribulation time, when all the, the, the things that are going on on earth, we're going to be standing before before God and give an account for, for, for our lives at judgment seat of Christ. We'll also receive the rewards that, that, that we've laid up in store. Okay? Those crowns that we can earn through the different things that we've been faithful to. Okay? And that's a whole other study, the, the crowns that we, can, that, we can, that we can receive for the things that we're, we're doing here on this earth, living for, for Christ. 
wonder if that'll be a time when there'll be a lot of tears too though you know the bible says no more tears at some point but i have to wonder if, if we won't shed tears when we see what could have been well yeah right. and I, I think you're 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 correct there ken because because just probably thinking of the opportunities we missed you know i i think of that quite often the, the opportunities i missed through the years of of the people I should have shared Christ with, but I didn't, yeah. right? You know, there's just so many things that we're, we're probably gonna be shedding tears over. Well, Paula? You think there's a public judgment too, uh, biblical? Yeah, all no. secrets hidden, uh, uh, all secrets hidden. I don't think it'll be in front of everybody, I don't. I don't, because I think that's between us and, and God. You know, some, some people believe that there'll be a big old screen and everybody's things will be shown up on there. I don't think that I don't think that's how to be. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be instantaneous for everybody? There's not gonna be no waiting line. No, there's not gonna be no yeah. wait. You know, God God's everywhere. <laughs> right? God's God. everywhere. We we can't comprehend that, but we will one day. But he'll take care of it, I believe, all at the same time. You know, dealing with those things, so it's not like we're going to be sitting there watching what everybody else has have happened to. No, it's between uh, you give you give an account for yourself to God, not for anybody else. That, this is different than the Great White Throne Judgment. Yes, that's different. The Great White Throne of Judgment will take place at the uh, at the end of the millennium. Okay, and He'll take care of all the dead that have rejected Him through all the ages. It says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So yeah, that's different. The great white throne of judgment is for, for all those that have rejected him through the, through the years, through the ages. So I believe that that's gonna take place during this time after we're raptured up to be with him is the judgment seat of Christ. So, let me just mention this and we'll wrap up for tonight and we'll pick up here next week. But we're going to talk about seven things, seven things around the throne. Because <laughs> realize the throne is the focal point. It's what it's all about. Let me just read these verses and make a few comments and we'll wrap up for tonight. The first thing that we see is the, the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 2 and 3. Immediately, I was in the Spirit. So there's the Spirit. Jesus, or John says, immediate, I, I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he who sat on, sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. So the jasper was like, like white or possibly maybe some, maybe some purple tints to it, you know, like a diamond. Sardius was red. So you have this kind of a clear and red stones in appearance. And guess what? Each one of those was part of the, the high priest. Ephah. Yeah. Ephah. With all the different stones in it. So we see that he sat there was like jasper and sardius stone in appearance. Check this out. There was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? So, John says that immediately he was in the spirit and behold, a throne set in heaven. There's the focal point. And the one that sat on it Jasper, Sardius, rainbow around the throne. Now realize this. It was the complete rainbow. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not just a half heart club. Mm -hmm. It was the whole thing. So, mind blown, right? So as I've already mentioned, and, and, and I'll wrap up with this, John was immediately in the spirit. And all three of the members of the, the Trinity are mentioned. You have the Holy Spirit, you have God, and you have God the Son, mm -hmm. Jesus. So we see that throne, the worship goes to God. <coughs> all three. They're all one, aren't they? They are three individual separate entities, but they're all one. So the worship is to all. So realize that, because it can be a little confusing. Now there is specific mention to each part of this, we see that it's kind of focusing on God here in chapter 4, but you get to chapter 5 and then the focus is more on Jesus. But here's the thing. They're all one. We're worshiping God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So coming back to the, to the Spirit question earlier about, yes, the Spirit will, will be present during the tribulation, but in a different way. Just like it was in, in the Old Testament. And different, and as it, as we are in the church age, it's, it's different. Okay, but there will be the the presence of the Spirit that that draws those people to to, to God during that time period, just a different way. There's 144,000 who will be witnessing. The, the Spirit yes, will be the one. And those are those are the Jews. Yeah. But that's referring to there. We'll, of course, we'll get to that in a few chapters and get into that more in depth. So let me wrap up right there. We'll pick up with, with, with these verses uh, next week. Any, any thoughts, questions that anybody has before we finish up? Dan? Uh, one of the things that jumps out at me is as soon as John starts describing the throne room, he says, there's a chair there and all the one who sits on it. Yeah. It's like yeah. all of the other details don't matter no. because... No. Well, and... And with that description that we see here, you're not going to be worried about anybody but God when you get to heaven. You know, you hear others say, you know, I want to see my loved ones. No, no, no. They're down on the list. It's going to be God. Right? That's who you're looking for. Because that's who is worthy. Worthy of all the praise and the honor and the glory. Phil? One point I think it's hard to grasp is when we get to heaven, I don't think we're going to be thinking of time. I don't think we'll have the strength of time. No, it's going to be different. Yeah, time time will be, it's just like it's just like God's time and it's not our time. Yeah. You know, a, a, a day to us may be a thousand years for him or vice versa. Okay? That's just... You know, time is, is, is different. Again, we have a finite mind. We can't understand an infinite God that knows everything. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be different. I, we talked about this a, a few weeks back, I think, but we're all, we're gonna be recognizable. You know, you're gonna recognize, you know, your your parents, your your spouse, whoever it might be, kids. You'll recognize, but it's gonna be different. <laughs> It's going to be different because they recognized Jesus in his resurrected body after he was resurrected. Or after he was resurrected. They recognized him. We'll be recognizable, but it's going to be different, okay? It's going to be a whole different thing. Pastor, you uh, there's only two times that, the, that there's a door open in heaven. The first time is for us to be raptured up, and the second time is for us to come back with him. Yeah, that's right, because we will. We will come back with him. And we'll get to that again as well when we get into to, to the later chapters in, in Revelation. But uh, let me just say this. This book is amazing. It is. It is. Amen. And it takes time to, to understand. And it takes the, the right type of heart to understand it too because the Spirit is what teaches us. Okay? 
And we have to study, right? Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's why we have to pull out all these other... That's why when I teach and preach, you see lots of verses. Thank why? You. The Bible interprets itself. That's right. And if you try to build a doctrine on, on a phrase or a verse, it don't work. You can't build a doctrine or a teaching on one verse or one phrase. It's got to be supported with more than one. Okay, it's got to be God's principles don't change. He reinforces them over and over again. So, very important things to understand is this is a powerful book. Amen. And the more we, the more we study it, teach and preach it, the more we're going to learn from it. That's why Wednesday nights are important. That's why Sunday morning uh, growth groups are important. That's Amen. why Wednesday morning women's Bible studies. Amen. The more you can hear, the more you can learn, you're gonna, the better off you're going to be. God wants us to, to be faithful to His Word. But here's the flip side of that, though. The more you know, the more you're responsible for it. <laughs> the more reward you get. Well, that too. But he wants us to be what? Doers of the word. And not tears on So let's be faithful. Because you know what these things should motivate us to do? To go tell more people about Jesus. Because the time is short. Father, we thank you for the time we've had tonight. I thank you for the interaction with, with, uh, with each one. Lord, to be able to, to, to see your word, Lord, in, in a new way. And Lord, you, your promises are true. Lord, we draw nigh to you, you drive nigh to us. Lord, you tell us if we're willing to, to keep your commandments, that shows our love to you, and, and you love us, and Jesus loves us, and then you say that you will manifest or you will reveal more of yourself to us. So help us to keep your word where you'll show us more of your word. So I pray you'll continue to help us as we, as we study your word, Lord, that you'll show us the things you want us to see, but help us to take them and put them to practice in our life. And I pray that you'll help us to be lights in this dark world for you, that others will come to know you, Lord, and will not have to go through that terrible time of the, the tribulation and also will not have to spend eternity separated from you in hell. So help us to be a light, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen.